hand-me-downs, thrift shops, sewing machines, and that old needle and thread stories from my life, how we dressed in the 1950s and 60s. Grandma's porch. Sit down, relax, enjoy. Here on Grandma's porch. Hand-me-downs, thrift shops, and sewing machines in the 1950s and 60s. Hello, y'all. Stories from my life. I'm Diana Brianne. I don't give advice, suggestions, information, or recommendations. I just share with you my perspective on different topics, as is with this one. I hope you like, share, subscribe to all five of my channels. Links are pinned at the top of the comments section below. If you connect with me with all five, I will likely connect with you with all five. Well, I've been telling little stories from my life and little bits and pieces here and there. Um, and this one today is talking about the hand-me-downs and thrift shops and the sewing machines. Well, back in the late 50s, and I, I was born in the late 50s and into the 60s, um, you know, people had sewing machines and they didn't throw clothes out when they ripped, they repaired them. They um, would uh, sew up a sock if it had a hole in it. They would put redo their shoes. They didn't go out and buy a new pair of shoes. They would put something inside their shoes if they couldn't have them fixed properly. And sometimes a piece of cardboard inside the shoes so they could keep on going with that pair of shoes. Um, they tend, tended to have a very small amount of wardrobe and they kept their, their clothes neat and pressed and starched. Often the shirts were very, very starched back then. But clothes often came from... And so back in the day, we really wore all kinds of uh, hand-me-downs. You know, hand-me-downs was a big thing. I used to wear my brother's boots to school, and I used to wear some of my brother's clothes to school. We passed clothes down. We, you know, um, parents would save their clothes for the next child, and sometimes boys would wear girls' clothes and girls would wear boys' clothes, you know, to some degree, because it was whatever the previous child had, and if that previous child was a boy, and now they had a girl, or a girl and then a boy, you know, and so I wore my brother's boots. I did. I wore his bro my brother's boots to school. So that wasn't unusual. We all had hand-me-downs where I came from, and friends would give each other clothes, you know, and they'd say, hey, you want some hand-me-downs? And so hand-me-downs were really, really a big thing. We didn't really go to thrift shops too much until later on. Okay, later on, the thrift shops came about more later on. So really, we got our clothes from hand-me-downs, and we took care of them with the sewing machine. And if we didn't have a sewing machine, Grandma had one of those old-fashioned pedal sewing machines, which I have two of them. And um, But... You know, we had sewing machines, and if they didn't have a sewing machine, they did it by hand with a needle and thread. But they took care of every single thing that they had. They really, really did. They didn't just discard it or throw it away. And they'd patch it up. That you know, often you'd see someone's uh, pants with patches on it, and that was just the way it was. The knees would go out because you know, us kids, if we had jeans or whatever, uh, we would wear the knees out. But parents just patched them up, put patches, and we'd go to school. No one ever thought any different or anything of it. Today, people just throw them away, or they like the ripped look because that's kind of the in look. So they'll pay a lot of money for a pair of pants that Grandma would have just been patching up. She'd say, "Let me patch that hole in that." <laughs> And so we started off with the hand-me-downs and the sewing machine. Now, the first time I'd ever been to a thrift shop, 
um, was when I went, I was living in Europe. I flew back to visit my mom. She was living in Palm Springs at that time. And she said, you know what? You got to go in this place with me. It's a thrift shop. And oh my gosh, you can buy the most beautiful clothes for a fraction of the price that you normally would. Well, it was a very, very hot day. It was about 120 degrees out in Palm Springs. And so I set out in her car and it was awfully hot, even with the air conditioning on and she went in because I said I'm not going into any thrift shop I buy my clothes brand new I'm not going in there and so she was in there quite a long time and so I got impatient and I went in to see what she was doing and after that I fell in love with thrift shops oh my gosh now that was more of a pricier thrift shop okay it wasn't a cheap thrift shop and you know if something was like say a $200 outfit we still paid 25 or 30 dollars for it but as time went on, I began to go to thrift shops everywhere I went. So I became a thrift shop connoisseur. I got to know where the best deals were. I found things called the a thrift shop property rack in the back of the store where everything was a quarter. I have a beautiful Angora long angora sweater from Italy that I've had for about 25 years that I got when I was over in Europe and I had gone to a thrift shop and in the back of that thrift shop when anything when people didn't come back to claim the stuff that they put for consignment um, it went to the back of the store and it went on the quarter rack and I bought that gorgeous angora sweater for a quarter and it came from Italy from Italy beautiful beautiful I still have it today and I often shop on the quarter rack my kids were dressed often from the quarter rack and my kids were the best dressed kids in school they dressed in name brands they dressed in beautiful things and all from the thrift shop all from the thrift shop now i'm not a big electronic person from the thrift shops because often electronics do, do not work right sometimes they do now i've had good fortune with blenders not blenders yeah blenders but juicers, juicers and bread machines seem like people buy them, they don't use them, so they turn them in to the thrift shop. So those are usually pretty good. But some of the other electronic items are usually broken or not in the best of shape. So I usually don't buy electronics there, but I often do buy clothes. I make sure the zippers aren't broken or anything like that. And I shop on the days that they have the specials. I shop on the days that, you know, it's like the quarter rack, or I go to the back of the store. I go to one place right now that the prices are incredible and they do have a quarter rack on Saturdays and so if you shop around not all sh thrift shops are equal some are very pricey but if you shop around you can find wonderful wonderful thrift shops that are very inexpensive and like I said I dress off the quarter rack even today uh, my clothes mostly come from the thrift shop and I dress beautiful no one would ever notice the difference I bring them home wash them and if there is a little problem with it, I just sew it or whatever, you know, but that was how I got started in thrift shops and so like growing up we started off with the hand-me-downs and I believe in hand-me-downs I believe in saving stuff and often people come over to my house and I have a closet well I have a closet full of clothes but I have an attic full of clothes for all of us you know and it's very well organized and so if someone needs something I'll say come on up to my come up and shop in my attic <laughs> And I have all these beautiful outfits that cost a quarter, maybe a dollar, you know, name brands, the whole bit, gorgeous stuff. So why pay the full price when you can get something for very, very inexpensive, in my opinion? So I thought I would share my life in the 50s and 60s and even now how I shop. I love to be frugal. I love to get what I want, but I love to do it frugally. And that way I can do I can get more of what I want if I do it frugal. And I think thrift shops and hand-me-downs are a great way to go. And even the old-fashioned sewing machine. And I have two or three sewing machines. Actually, I have the pet two pedals, um, the old-fashioned ones, and then I have two or three of the other ones. So anyhow, may God bless you. And I hope to talk to you soon again. And I also have a, a needle and thread if I need to. <laughs> may God bless you. And I hope to talk to you soon again. Bye-bye.
place to relax and a place to enjoy you.